Hi, everybody. Welcome to English Digest. I'm Tom. Hi, I'm Stephanie. And today we are continuing to talk about Thanksgiving that is occurring later on this month in a couple of weeks. And if you're interested, maybe you would like to attend a workshop in which you will learn how to make a traditional Thanksgiving food called pumpkin pie. Okay, pumpkin pie is、uh, here in Taiwan. It's in a different form. I remember I used to be able to get it. At、uh, Sun Mary Bakery,、mm-hmm. I, don't, I think if you've heard of them before, yeah, I have. They don't seem to have it anymore, but、no. if you're familiar with that kind of pumpkin pie, you will know that it is not very similar to the pumpkin pie that we make in the United States. There is a lady in Taiwan, and she changes neighborhoods. At least in Taipei, guys, she changes neighborhoods from time to time, and sometimes she'll show up in my neighborhood, and you just buy a slice. No one buys a whole pie.、Mm. <laughs> uh, Because it's way too much sugar, probably. But those are really good, and it is very similar to the American flavor of pumpkin pie. I had a coworker, Jacob.、Uh, Tom and I both know Jacob. He bought me a slice of pumpkin pie for Thanksgiving one year. Isn't that sweet? You put a lot of cinnamon in it, nutmeg.、Um, yeah, it just felt like home for a little bit.、Uh, it's not my favorite pie for Thanksgiving, though. My favorite pie for Thanksgiving. Is my grandmother and my mother's recipe for apple pie? Okay. Yeah, I missed that.、Um, I need to try to make it one year, but I don't have a good oven. You need a good oven if you want to bake pies. I think what we're looking at here, Tom, is a memo to the office.、Mm. Uh, he's talking about the plans that they have, and they're announcing a special event. And this year, they're offering、uh, a. Baking studio、uh, workshop for everyone to participate in, and it does cost money. But you know, I think this would be so fun for team building as well.、Mm. And I think the office should pay for it, but they're not. Anyway, you can participate in this particular part of the event for Thanksgiving. This isn't the potluck we're talking about. This is separate. So let's get going, guys. We're going to go through the memo, talk about some of these words and phrases, and then we have some discussion questions. So don't go away after that. Right now, though, we're going to listen to this memo being read. Dear team, as Thanksgiving approaches, we're delighted to announce a special event celebrating this significant holiday. This year, we've partnered with DIY Baking Studio. To host an exclusive pumpkin pie baking workshop for our company employees. Date November twenty third. Time nine a.m. to twelve p.m. Location DIY Baking Studio. The workshop fee is seven hundred twenty NT dollars per person, which includes instant coffee and other beverages. If two people choose to collaborate on a single pie. An additional one hundred NT dollar self service bar fee will be imposed. The venue provides baking equipment, one iPad per team, and packaging boxes. All materials and ingredients will be provided, and recipes will be available on the iPads. Beginners need not worry, as professional instructors will be on hand to assist. After the workshop, you can take your pie home to share. For the safety of all involved, we kindly ask all participants to adhere to the following guidelines: one, wear comfortable clothing and closed-toe shoes suitable for baking; two, bring your own apron and hair tie to prevent hair from getting in contact with food; three, notify us of any dietary restrictions or allergies in advance. Spaces are limited, and registration will close on November fifteenth. Payment can be made in advance via bank transfer or on site at the event. To secure your spot, please fill out the attached registration form. For any inquiries, please email me. Warm regards, Toby Lee. Okay, it's time for us to discuss the contents of our memo for today. It's all about some exciting news,、uh, the kind of news that makes people feel excited. And Thanksgiving pumpkin pie workshop, or the Thanksgiving pumpkin pie workshop, the Thanksgiving pumpkin pie workshop is taking place very soon, and they're sending around this flyer or this memo 
、uh, to see if people are interested in participating in this particular workshop. Okay, that's when people get together and they learn a skill, usually by using their hands. A seminar is when you go hear a speech or something, and you hear some information, but you don't really get to do anything.、Mm-hmm. A workshop is more fun. You get to actually stand up at a table, and you get to play with things, and you get to、uh, work, work work with things. Basically, that's why it's called a workshop because you're working on things. You're participating in it,、mm-hmm. right? You're、with、not just listening,、yeah. and you're actually joking with the people and、uh, with other people and talking to them and stuff like that. You're Shooting the breeze or whatever, and you're learning a new thing. So here's how the memo begins. It says, "Dear team, as Thanksgiving approaches, we're delighted to announce a special event celebrating this significant holiday." So that、uh, sort of tells us what the、uh, topic of this memo is all about. It's about this special event that is going to take place in order to celebrate Thanksgiving. And this year, we've partnered with DIY Baking Studio to host an exclusive pumpkin pie baking workshop. For our company employees, so they're getting together with some kind of organization outside the office. It's DIY Baking Studio, so maybe it's a bakery or something. They have this studio where they teach people how to bake things, and they're partnering with them. They're working together with them, and together they're hosting or putting on or organizing this pumpkin pie baking workshop for everybody who works in the company. Hey, participate, and you can learn how to bake. A pumpkin pie sounds fun to me. I would definitely participate. Now the workshop fee isn't cheap. It's seven twenty per person. So you gotta pay, and you gotta pay up front, which means before the workshop happens. But that fee, or the price of of that fee, includes instant coffee, which is really nasty.、Mm. <laughs> I understand. I don't drink coffee, but. I've heard from all my friends that instant coffee tastes terrible, but they also have other beverages. When you see that word "beverage," it just means something to drink. It could be coffee, tea,、uh, water. Water's free, but、uh, it could be a a, a drink like a, a a soft drink. It could be a juice, whatever. But they always、uh, have things to drink if you go to a workshop, and that's always considered to be free. Um, it does not include alcoholic beverages、uh, because those are expensive, and you're not supposed to be getting drunk in the middle of the day or in the morning here、uh, with your coworkers. Yeah, if you're baking and you're drinking at the same time, my goodness, you could have an accident. You could stick your head in the oven by a mistake because you're drunk. We don't want that happening. Or you could put in sugar.、Uh, you know how you put in sugar. Someone could accidentally put in salt and think they put in、mm, sugar. Yeah, yeah, it's just not a good you idea. You got to have people thinking clearly when they're、yes. baking a pie. So, indeed, that's the fee there. I think that's kind of high myself, but in any case, I guess you get some instant coffee there and some other drinks or beverages. And if two people choose to collaborate on a single pie, an additional one hundred anti dollar self service bar fee will be imposed. So, I suppose you could save a little money by working together with somebody. You could collaborate with somebody, which means to work together with somebody. Sometimes the word "collaborate" has a negative meaning. You might collaborate with the with the enemy, for example. You're working together with the enemy in a war or something, and that's new, not good. But in this particular case, you're just working together with somebody else to bake this pie. But you're going to have to pay an extra fee there for something called the self service bar fee. Okay, so I guess there's some place where you can serve yourself. And this fee will be imposed, which means it will be presented, and you'll have to pay this fee. You will have no choice. Yeah, if you impose something on some person, it just means you force something to be accepted or to happen. We'll often use it、uh, to talk about bad things or unwelcome things. But you impose a fee if two people. They're going to impose a fee if two people decide to work together on one pie. They're not both making their own pies.、Uh, they're going to work together. Maybe someone's brand new to baking itself, and they just want to、uh, watch a friend do it and help out a little bit.、Uh, pies aren't easy to make. I'll be honest, especially the crust. That's the part that goes on the bottom and on the top.、Uh, sometimes a pie doesn't have a crust on top,、mm. but、uh, that's the difficult part. It's very easy to mess it up. I remember my grandma would say, "Ah,、oh, 
my crust isn't very good this year. Of course, I thought it was still delicious. But yeah, to impose, you can also use impose to talk about bothering someone or interrupting somebody. Maybe you want to、uh, go next door to your neighbor's house and borrow an egg or a cup of sugar, and、uh, they answer the door, and you you can say, "Oh, I'm sorry to impose, but could I ask、uh, if you have an extra egg you can lend to me, or you know, I can borrow, and I'll give you an egg back tomorrow." To impose means to Again, to kind of interrupt in that way, but here it means something's forced on you that you'd rather not do, and that's paying the fee. Right, but you still could save some money by working together with somebody else if you're not really expecting to eat so much pie. And the memo goes on to say the venue provides baking equipment, one iPad per team, and packaging boxes. So the venue here just refers to the location where something takes place. I could say, yeah, what is the venue of the concert? Well, the concert's venue will be in the Riverside Park, for example.、Uh -huh. You might have a concert there. That would be the venue, the place it's going to take place, and the location where this activity takes place will provide various things. You'll get equipment, which I I believe would include some of the tools and the mixing bowls. And、uh, pie tins, I guess they're called. And, measuring spoons, right? Measuring cups and things like、yeah. that. An oven, of course. And you'll also get an iPad. You don't get to keep it, I don't think, but、uh, you'll have an <laughs> iPad to use, which will have the、uh, recipe on it.、Uh -huh. And then, of course, where are you going to put the pie when you're done baking it? Well, you're going to put it in the packaging box so that you can take it home, so that it won't get crushed while you're taking the bus home. Oh, that would be sad after all that work. So all the materials, the ingredients, all of that stuff is provided. If you're making a pumpkin pie, they're going to give you probably a can of pumpkins.、Uh, here in Taiwan, we grow a lot of pumpkins, so it takes a while to cook a pumpkin down, though. So they probably have those already、uh, ready for you to go with. They're going to give you the sugar, the flour, the salt,、uh, any seasonings you might need, and the recipes. Are available on the iPads. Probably the cooking instructions or directions are as well. A recipe is a list of ingredients, a list of of、uh, things that will go into that dish you're making. So if someone,、uh, if you bring a dish to a potluck and someone says, "Oh, I love this dish," and they might say, "Can I have your recipe?" or "Can I have the recipe?" and then you can give them a list of ingredients that they'll need to buy to make that particular dish. Right, and of course, if you're a beginner, you might be worried. Gee, I've never baked a pie before.、Mm -hmm. What's going to happen? I don't know if I can do it. Well, beginners need not worry. You don't need to worry if you're a beginner, because or as professional instructors will be on hand. They will be there. They will be available to assist you. So, an instructor is somebody who basically teaches you to do something. An instructor could be. Uh, to me, an instructor is somebody who teaches you something that you actually can do, whereas a teacher gives you basically information. But sometimes these terms、uh, get mixed around a bit. But to me, an instructor is somebody who's teaching you how to actually do something. Although, if you go to college, they have a position that's lower than a professor, and they're often called instructors.、Mm. Uh, but yeah,、uh, maybe you're wanting to get your driver's license. Here in Taiwan, you go to a school. And you have a driving instructor who teaches you how to pass that test, which is very tricky in Taiwan. I must say, I did pass it, but it wasn't easy. So you've got all of these things that are included if you pay that fee. Now you can understand why the fee is seven hundred twenty NT dollars per person. They're giving you all the ingredients for your pie, the box to package it, package it in. Of course, they're having to pay the instructors to walk around the room and make sure you guys don't mess up your pies. So it does cost a lot. Plus, they're in that space; they have air conditioning on. All of this stuff costs money. So we want this business to make some profit, don't we? So you do have to pay. Now, after the workshop is over, the good news, as Tom said, is you can take the pie home. Yay! Don't leave it there. That would be awful. You take it home. And you eat it, and hopefully your family goes, "Oh, you did a good job," and doesn't have a bite and go, "Gross! What did you put in this?"、Mm, indeed. So that's a good thing here. You can take the pie home from you. You can take the pie home with you. 
And again, it does seem to be quite a high fee, but it might be an investment for a lifetime of pleasure、uh, because now you'll be able to bake your own pumpkin pie in the future, and you'll have plenty of pumpkin pie on hand、uh, for future celebrations. And I suppose if you learn how to bake a pumpkin pie, you can apply that knowledge to baking other kinds of pie, like cherry pie or apple pie or whatever. Although I'm sure there are slight differences between how they're made, but I think basically the、uh, the basic information is the same.、Uh, the recipe would be very different, though, for the inside of the pie, right? Pumpkin versus apple, and how you make that、uh, filling. We call it filling that goes inside the pie. Oh, what filling does your pie have? A cherry filling.、Uh, it's a lemon custard pie. It's a pumpkin pie. And then, if you really like to be fancy, you might want to put some whipped cream on top, which is really good. Or serve your pie with ice cream, which is also very popular. You could say so. For the safety of all involved, they want you to follow some rules they have in their workshop. Uh, you need to wear the appropriate clothing. So they say, "Hey, you need to wear comfortable clothing. You're going to be standing a lot. This is not a process where you're sitting in a chair. You're standing. You're over a table,、um, and so you're mixing your pie that way. You're in front of a stove, you know, or you're bending down to use the oven. They also want you to wear closed-toe shoes. That's like a sneaker or a tennis shoe." Don't wear sandals because if you drop something hot on the floor and it hits your toe, that could hurt. It could hurt, and it could knock your toenails off your toes, and that would hurt for a very long time. So yes, wear closed-toe shoes like sneakers or whatever. And here's the second guideline: bring your own apron and hair tie to prevent hair from getting in contact with food. An apron, of course, is a piece of cloth you wear in front of you、uh -huh. if you work in a restaurant. Or in a bakery, and you don't want your clothes to get dirty. You wear this apron over your clothes. You tie it in the back, and also you have a hair tie, something that ties your hair up.、Uh, when I worked for a food service in the dormitory, we had hair nets that we had to wear so that the hair would not come in contact with the food. But I suppose this is a similar process here: a hair tie or a hair net that will stop your hair from getting into the food. You're also supposed to notify them or tell them in advance if you have any dietary restrictions. Are you allergic to something, or there's some things that you can't、um, be around? Some people are allergic to shellfish.、Mm. Even if they touch it,、uh, it starts a really bad reaction. Allergies is an important word because some people, their bodies respond poorly to things like、uh, animal fur. Or maybe mold, or even smoke. So, if you have allergies, your body might respond by coughing. You want to cough, or your eyes start watering, or your nose starts running. It's a mess. So, spaces are limited. They don't have endless space for everybody. So, you better register as soon as you find out. Registration is one of our vocabulary words. It means you sign up for something like a class or a workshop. You're signing up and letting people know that you want to participate. You register for school,、uh, and you pick your classes that way. Registration will end or close on November fifteenth. They won't accept people after that point. Right, and of course Thanksgiving occurs after that, so we want to, to make sure everybody can make the pie before Thanksgiving actually occurs. And payment can be made in advance ahead of time via bank transfer. You can、uh, send money. Uh, from one bank to another, probably you can use an ATM machine in your local convenience store, or you can pay on site at the event. You you can register at first, but then when you arrive at the venue or the location, you can pay. Then that's fine. You can pay on site to secure your spot. To make sure you get a spot, please fill out the attached registration form. For any inquiries, please email me. Warm regards, Toby Lee. Okay, so this is what you have to do. You need to register for the event, figure out a way to pay for it, and then、uh, fill out the registration form, which will probably include your name, your phone number, and some other personal information. Yeah, the workshop,、uh, which is being held at DIY Baking Studio, might want to contact you, or、uh, maybe the team that's organizing this needs to contact you. So 
Yeah, you'll need to register, give them your contact information, so that everything will go smoothly. Someone who's always very smooth is our Chinese teacher. We're gonna listen for a few minutes, and then we'll be back to、uh, go over some of these discussion questions. Stay tuned. 听众朋友，大家好，我是安娜。我们昨天带大家看了 Toby 他们整个团队啊，要会用跨文化的方式啊，这在一个办一个办公室 party， 到底讨论一些什么重点？不过我们今天要带大家看一下，如果我们今天设计了一个活动，比如说我们今天看到的是感恩节烘焙去，那这样子的一个 email， 它要怎么写呢？好，那 email 它其实就是一种信件嘛，所以我们要回归到信件的格式。当我们写信给对方，不管是传统的邮件或是 email， 一开始都会有称谓 ，dear 谁谁谁打逗点，然后接下来一段一段的段落都要根据文意分清楚。那么最后面呢，在 email 或传统信件之下，通常会来个 regards、more regards、best regards、yours， 再签名，写上自己的名字。那中间呢，通常。都大家会询问说，这个段落到底我要空四个字母，还是全部向左对齐呢？其实这就牵扯到美式跟英式不同的格式。如果是美式的话，段落的前面都会空四个字母，大概差不多一两公分左右。反正如果你打字的话，就是空四格；如果是写字的话呢，那大概差不多就是一到两公分。可如果你要选择全部对齐的话呢，就不管是。称谓啦，还是下面的签名，就全部都往左对，这就是英式的格式，选一个来写就可以了。好，那接下来我们就要看一下今天这个考南瓜派对的 email 邀请函，在第一段当中啊，一开始第一句我们就看到了一个 as， 那我们先判断一下这里的 as 到底是连接词还是介系词，因为当介系词的时候，可能是作为什么样的身份。那当连接词的时候，意思就很多啦，可能是 when、because、如同、好像，关键就在于 s 到逗点中间有没有动词嘞。所以你一定要认得 approach 这个字，因为 approach 就是接近的动作，它是个动词哦。所以在这里的 s 它一定是一个连接词。好，那我们就判断一下，呃，感恩节来了，我们很高兴要宣布，我们要办一个活动啊，那可能是。因为感恩节，或者是随着感恩节的接近，所以在这里的 as 很妙哦。如果你翻成表原因的 because， 或者是连接时间的 when， 其实都是通顺的。不过在第一段呢，要特别注意一下第二句。第二句当中有一个形容词，中间的地方 exclusive，exclusive exclusive, 这个形容词啊，指的是专属的，或者是这个独家的，或者是排外的。因为 exclusive 它的动词原型是 exclude e x c l u d e， 它是将什么什么排除在外的意思。跟它长得很像的字就是 include i n c l u d e， 那个 include 是包含，那这个 exclude 呢就有排除跟专属，甚至独家新闻那个独家都用这个字。好，那接着我们就看来看到。第二段这边就有写到日期啊、时间、地点。那么第三段这里呢，文字的叙述，我们要特别注意一下。第一句开始到第三句，它都有出现一个大家很常用的、很而且也很常问的，叫做 per。比如说第一句费用呢是 seven hundred twenty anti dollars per person， 每一个人是七百二十块啊。为什么不能用 every？ 因为 Every person 或者是 everyone 强调的是全部的人，它在文艺上强调的是整体的概念，而 per 呢 ，per 后面加的人事物则强调是针对每一个人事物里面如何。所以，如果你觉得文艺还是很难分的话，没有关系，有一个关键，当我们看到 per 后面加人事物单数的时候，通常在 per 的前面都会有一个数量，表示。每一个人事物如何如何有多少？例如在这里，一个人720块，或者是第三句的 one iPad per team， 每一个队伍都可以拿到一个 iPad。那这个时候你就知道，我如果强调在某一个单位词里面有多少的数量的时候，我就会用 per。好。
。那同样在这一段当中，我们特别注意第五句哦。第五句告诉我们说，哎，如果你是初学的话，不用担心，因为现场其实都会有专业老师指导啦。哈。好，那在这里呢，我们要特别提出来，因为句子中间逗点之后有一个 s， 这里的 s 跟我们刚才第一段第一句第一个这个句首的 s， 它是同样。都属于连接词，因为在这句话当中啊 ，as 的前面，逗点前面 ，need 有一个动词有没有？逗点之后 ，will be 这里又出现动词，所以我们判断这里的二十一定是连接词。所以根据文意 ，when because 如同好像，我们判断它是连接词，而且表原因，因为会有专业的人士指导。好，那接下来看到最后倒数第二段。倒数第二段这边呢，我们数下来是第四段咯。当然要提醒大家，如果说要来的话呢，你可能要穿一些合适的衣服，然后呢，这个要用围裙啊，然后发圈啊等等的。我们特别注意一下第四段这边的第一点，因为这边的第一点呢、啊，除了穿舒适的衣服之外，还要穿包鞋。这个包鞋英文当中，我们的概念是中文是把脚包起来的鞋子，那英文指的是这个脚趾啊。要收起来，脚趾不要露出来，所以这包鞋在英文当中叫做 closed toe shoes。那 closed toe 呢，就连接词，这个一个 hyphen 连起来变成复合形容词了。好，最后面呢，我们来看一下报名费用怎么用呢？当然你可以转账啦，或者是干脆到现场来付款。最后一段，请注意一下，在第二句的地方，如果我们要说你可以到现场付款哦，可以直接讲。On site 就是在现场，当时 on site， 你可以直接在现场呢 ，at the event， 在活动现场付款。我们今天就带大家看了一下这个信件的格式，然后还有一些特殊的用法，包含 as 还有 per 的用法，希望大家都学到喽。我是 Anna， 我们下次见。We're gonna take a quick break. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. I passed by a DIY baking studio a couple months ago, and I thought, "Oh, I need to sign up."、Um, I didn't yet. I haven't yet, I should say. But、uh, I wanted to learn how to decorate a cake. Now I already know how to make a pumpkin pie. It's probably the easiest pie you can make.、Um, for us in America, we actually buy a can of pumpkin that has already been cooked. And then you add things like sugar,、um, cinnamon, nutmeg, things like that that makes it taste familiar to us. And you know that's about all you have to do.、Uh, you cook it on a stove for a little while, but not not very long. It's not like the filling in an apple pie, which has to be cooked for a long time because the apples need to get softer, so you can actually、um, chew them. They shouldn't be crunchy if you're making an apple pie, guys.、Mm. So、um, I wouldn't want to go to the workshop to learn how to make a pumpkin pie, but I would go if I could make another kind of flavor.、Uh, definitely, I, I would want to go. I've never made like a lemon custard pie. It's not my favorite pie, but I'd like to learn how to make one、um, or a, a, a key lime pie, which、mm. I love. And you never see in Taiwan. I love those. Would you go, Tom? Is this something that would interest you?、Uh, well, yeah, I know how to bake some things, but not pumpkin pie. So yeah, I probably would attend in order to learn how to bake a pumpkin pie,、uh-huh. and then apply that information or apply that knowledge to baking other kinds of pie in the future. But this does sound interesting because hey, it's fun to get together with other people,、That's、and you're、fun. all and you're all working together. To produce some kinds of results, and you can go around and look at each other's、uh, work and say, "Hey, you did a good job. Well, you did a terrible job." 
and you kind of help each other out. So it does sound like a fun social kind of activity. Although I do consider myself、uh, introverted for the most part, but、uh, still, this could be a lot of fun working with other people. And boy, it sounds fun to actually wear that apron. I love wearing aprons. <laughs> okay, the second question,、uh, I'll answer. Would you prefer to work individually or with a partner during the workshop? Why? I would definitely work with a partner, just because it's more fun with people、um, laughing and joking around together. Yes, we would want to make a good tasting pie, but I would pick、uh, probably someone I really enjoy being around. And work with them on this because you could laugh more. I think this is a great idea for team spirit and morale building, just for、um, an office activity. Because you know people are going to do stuff, stuff that's wrong or make silly mistakes, and then you'll be able to laugh about that forever because people always remember those things.、Uh, it's a good memory, so I definitely think. Uh, working with a partner would be more fun. Yeah, it would be. And of course, if you're working with a partner and you start getting angry and you have some disagreements about how to make the pie, you can actually throw the pie in the other person's face. <laughs> Although you don't want to waste all the ingredients on a pumpkin pie to do that. What you really need to do is just take a pie tin and fill it with menthol shaving cream and then just throw it in their face that way. But that's something to be done maybe、uh, for Halloween or something like that. But、uh, Halloween, of course, has already passed. Thanksgiving is coming, and we wish you a happy Thanksgiving. And remember, eating pumpkin pie and turkey is all a part of that celebration. Hopefully, you can find some of that stuff to eat here in good old Taiwan. That brings us to the end of our lesson for today. And remember, you can check out extra content on YouTube and Facebook to help with your English listening. Comprehension ability. It's been a pleasure serving you from all of us here at English Digest. I'm Tom. I'm Stephanie. Goodbye. Bye.